Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer with For and From St Catherine's. A new week begins, it's Monday, it, the sun's shining and uh, it's time for a change of theme. I couldn't bear any more of Jacob and cheating and being cheated. We'll come, we'll come back to him again. Uh, interestingly, in the passage we are going to look at from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, he looks back over the past of the Israelite people and says, well, there's lessons to be learned there. There's lessons to be learned from this grumpy old lot. <laughs> He's not looking quite as far back as Jacob. But, well, there's lessons to be learned. Let's see if we can learn them. Join me for that. Join me to begin with for our opening prayer. We're back in the book of 1 Corinthians. Paul has looked at issues towards uh, about unity, about trusting different leaders and the fact that we don't all have to be the same. We have different roles. He's looked at stuff about marriage. He's looked at stuff about food sacrifice to idols. Uh, he's covered various different issues that had popped up that people had told him about. And now I think he takes a pause. He's got more issues to deal with. They'll come up. But he's taking a pause from those and he's looking back into ancient Jewish history. This is what he writes. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptised or rather immersed into Moses in the cloud and the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now, these things occurred as examples to us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did, as it is written that people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did, and 23,000 fell on a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the end of ages has come. If you think you're standing, watch out that you don't fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. He will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. I've raided the jam cupboard. I've got four different jars of jam. Paul loves a list. Jesus told stories, wild or wacky stories. They're a lot of fun. Paul makes lists. And whenever he's think of, thinking of something, he thinks of lists. Lists of good things, lists of bad things. And this is a list of mistakes made by the Jewish ancestors back in the time of Moses, which Paul is saying, look, we can learn from this. We mustn't do this. So we'll take them in order. I'm going to start here. Uh, idolatry is the first one. For idolatry, we have red currant jelly made that years ago, hardly ever eat it. Um, idolatry in their days, it was making the golden calf and bowing down to it. But idolatry is putting our trust in the outward things. And in the, in the text chat, I raised the issue that one of the mistakes that Christians make is to believe that what we do in church somehow secures our salvation. And other people who don't come to church and don't do the thing that we do in church, whatever that thing is, are at risk of eternal damnation because they don't do the thing that we do. And that different churches, different traditions will have different things that they put their hope on. But that is idolatry. That is idolatry. And Paul is saying, don't do it. Next up is a, is a popular one in Christian history. I've got marmalade for this. Sexual immorality. Oh my goodness, hasn't the Christian church made a business, a business over the centuries in 
poking people about their sexuality and pointing out that it's wrong, defining an incredibly narrow form of acceptable sexuality and then defining everybody else as wrong and sinful because of it. And Paul indeed is saying, look, you know, they did some crazy things in those ancient days. It wasn't good. It wasn't helpful. And uh, we need to learn from that. Next up is testing, testing God. In particular, Paul says testing Christ, but testing God, putting God to the test, not trusting him, not taking him as, as he comes, but, but testing him, trying him out, making sure that he's all right. Paul says, watch that. You know, we can all make that mistake. We can all fall into that of rather than trusting God, of testing God. Uh, the ancients did it. It didn't work out well for them. Now, these are pretty common ones. Uh, idolatry in different forms the church has got animated about. Was, the church is always animated about what the other church does. This lot over here, look at what that lot over, the door, over there do. Say, that's idolatry. And the ones over here are saying it to them. Sexual immorality, definitely been a big business over the years and is something that, you know, we need to make sure that we are in all our relationships loving and respecting. No doubt about that. Testing God, I, I, that is maybe not such a headline grabber, uh, but it's been there and there are times when we realise that. But it's this one, the fourth one of this list that I love, complaining, complaining. Think how animated the church has got over the years about idolatry. Think how animated the church has got over the years about sexual immorality. Think how animated the church has got over the years about people testing God. And then Paul, the fourth on his list, this is Blackberry and Apple Jam, is complaining, grumbling, some translations have. That is as bad. It's on the list. It is an equal of all the others. We get worried about all these, these headline things. The, uh, but actually, Paul says grumbling. They did a lot of grumbling, and we've not got to be grumblers. My experience of working at the Church of England is there's a lot of this. I don't know why I've got the smallest jar for that. I think probably this jar should be the grumbling jar. We do a heck of a lot of grumbling and it's not honouring to God. It's not loving to one another and it's a problem. We've got to learn about idolatry. We've got to learn about sexual immorality. We've got to learn about testing God. And we've also got to learn not to complain so much. What do you think? Can we do it? Towards the end of that passage, Paul talks about being tested. He says, I can get it up, uh, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. Uh, the word that he uses for testing here is exactly the same as the word that Jesus used in the Lord's Prayer, which is normally translated temptation. Uh, but it means testing, as I said the other week. There's nothing that comes our way that isn't normal. That isn't common. We don't get special testing. We're not being pursued by the devil, as a lot of religious people do like to think that the devil's got it in for them in person. To be honest, I think the devil's probably got more important things. Uh, but we get tested. Our patience gets tested. Our abilities get tested. Our weaknesses get tested. Uh, that's part of life. Everybody gets tested. But God will make sure that we don't get tested beyond our breaking point. If you're suffering it, God believes you can cope with it. So trust him. Let's join Jesus in his prayer, which ends with that point. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. That just about brings us to the end of our daily prayer for today. But there's one other sentence that I just wanted to share from the passage. So if you think that you are standing, watch out that you don't fall. Paul works on the assumption that we're all sinners. Jesus worked on exactly the same assumption. Jesus isn't trying to give us a a rule of life by which we can avoid sin because we can't do that. And similarly, Paul isn't trying to give us a rule of life uh, so that we don't sin because he knows that we don't we can't do that. The things that he highlights, the idolatry, the sexual immorality, the testing, the grumbling, they're things that we they're traps we all fall into. He's not trying to create a group of people who never get anything wrong because that's simply not going to happen. And Paul at this point says, look, if you think you're doing well, then watch out because you'll probably fall at any moment. We all fall. That's why Jesus has in his prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Let's not be complacent. If we're standing today, we may be falling tomorrow. Let's just trust God. Join me for the prayer of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.